Um, cheese and potato and oh, green onion. And then we have some hot. No, I think hot. They're not hot. Okay. Um, well, today we're talking about a little bit of a heavy topic. Um, and I don't mean heavy as in dark. I mean heavy as in uh, a lot of stuff to go dark. over. <laughs> well, I can try. Um, uh, and so this is probably something we're going to have to come back to in future lessons. And I hope to just kind of get the basic here. So let me say it like this. If you have any questions, stop me and ask them, okay? All right. Because this is kind of a, 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 a wide topic. Do we have value based off of what we could be or what we could achieve or based off of what we are? When God saves us, does he see what we'll do for his kingdom? Does he see what we'll become? Does he see what he can do with us to save others? Does he see it as a numbers game? If I save this one, these 50 will also be saved. See what I mean? Does he see it as a numbers game? Does he see it as, as you know, or or would he would he would he... Would he allow some to die for the sake of saving one? See what I mean? Is it a numbers game with God? Do we have value bases based off what we could be, what we could achieve, or based off what we are? Just think about that. To kind of... What I'm thinking about here is... Imagine an employee, okay? Goes in for an interview to get the job. And the boss says, you know what, I see potential in this person. So I'm going to hire them. I'm going out on them. I'm going to hire you. I'm going to give you a chance. And he hires the, the employee, okay? But then it turns out that the employee isn't very good at his job. So he fires him. Right? You would, you would consider that to be reasonable, right? If you were the boss? That, that kind of makes sense. So that, that kind of makes us ask the question, is it is it similar with God? Does he does he does he um do does he see value or does he save us or whatever based off of what could be what will be in other words or simply because he sees value at that time and if so what makes him see value if we are sinful beings see what I mean it's just it's kind of a see it, it, you understand what I'm what I'm getting at here um yeah so what do you guys think of that I think that it is based off of what we are okay. and what he sees at that time. Okay. Not what we could be. And why do you think that? Hmm? And why do you think that? Because a lot of Christians or that don't necessarily go out and do like splendid things. They just live their life and that, and they're important to him. Just hmm. as important as those who do go out and do a bunch. Hmm. Hmm. Does anybody have anything to add to that, or? I mean, I, I completely agree with him. Like, it's never crossed my it's never crossed my mind that God only loves me because of what He's going to get out of me. Hmm. That's kind of what it sounds like to me. God only loves me for what I'm going to do for him. Mm -hmm. And that is totally against God's character. God loves us because he loves us. He created us knowing that we were going to fall to sin. He created us knowing he was going to have to send his son to die for us. And he still did it because of love, not because of... God doesn't need us. Okay. He just loves us. This was a triumph. Sorry, let me turn that off. <laughs> People text me for something. Um, okay, so in other words, God's kind of taking a hit on that one, huh? You got and got the short on that stick, huh? Right. <laughs> That's basically what you're saying. But God right? doesn't see it that way. Right. Right. You know? But yeah, if we look at it, yeah, God got the. So. The Go ahead. He, I think he also looks at advances. I mean, like, I I think he I think it's a little bit of both. Okay, explain what you mean. Well, I think I agree with them how, you know, like, in God's character, he, he sees us here and now, and what, what we are now, and he still forgives us. But I think also that he sees us what we're going to be, and not so much numbers, but the impact we're going to have in other people's lives. 
Hmm. Okay. But what if I go my whole life and I'm a Christian, but I don't really impact anybody's life? Does hmm. that still love me? Yeah. Is he still going to, you know... He is just weren't as good loves, of a Christian. He loves this person over here who does more <laughs> than me, who doesn't do really anything. Oh, no, I don't, well, yeah. I don't think so. No, because, um, <laughs> yeah. because he, oh he sees how you're going to be, and he still saves you, even though you how that you're not going to impact anybody's life. Yes, yeah, that's, that's. So then. I think God's hope is that we always, you know, grow and impact more people's lives. But he he knows that, you know, some of us won't and he still saves us even though we won't be. Okay. So let me throw kind of a, another question out. Um, don't we kind of act like the other way around though sometimes? Don't we act like God... But like we have to we gain do. value. Don't yeah, we kind of act like I that think sometimes? That's our, our mindset because the, I think we compare okay. that to other people. Okay. Right, we kind of compare who God is to other people. Okay. Other people base our values on what we do, yeah. on our successes, and sometimes I think. Oh, you're getting ahead. You're getting ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I like where you're going, but that's further in the lesson. Hold back. Hold back. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you should be seeing where he's at. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't like it there. Do you see this picture here? Yeah. It's, it's a little cat, but the shadow is a lion. And so that kind of brings up the question, here we are, and like, what if that's what we will be? Or, this is what God can make us into, even though we aren't going to be the biggest predator out there. So, I mean, it just brings a lot of different questions. Just think about that. But that was interesting. Uh, it just gives you something to think about there. Just <laughs> oh, I think the wheels um. are burning. So that obviously, how does God see us? Which we, we just went into. Um, so, what defines you as a person then? What makes you you? <laughs> well, that's a hard question because we're all different. Okay, so what defines you? 80s music and skinny jeans. <laughs> that's hilarious. No, I don't know. What makes me me? Think, right. Remember back to high school. Let, let me kind of help you out with, with, with where I'm headed with this. Remember back to, remember back to high school. The, you know, there were the nerds. There were... The jocks, the popular. Yes, the exactly. Yes, they, they were. You know what I mean. And and if you were, you really couldn't be in just floating out there. You were one of those cliques, right? You got, you you, you got put in one of those cliques. And if you were just the floaters, you were just weird. <laughs> Jeez, like somebody's texting me a book. Let's make sure nobody died. Okay, nobody died. We're good. Um, jeez, huh? I lost train of tra I lost my train of thought. Um, okay, yeah, high school. Yeah, okay. But nobody ever asks you who you really are, right? You just kind of get put in that clique, right? Right. Kind of new, yeah. You know what I mean? You gravitate based towards upon, the people that you relate to. Based upon your likes and interests. Yes, yes. And, and you're put into that mold. You are a this. You are a this. You see what I mean? So what – but – is that what defines us? What what, or or does something else define us? What defines us as a person, as an individual? I think a lot of people would say that our past defines us, but not necessarily. I think on some things it does. You know, like the things that we experience, we learn from, and we grow from. But other things, like your mom, for example, she grew up in this town, mm -hmm. and she wasn't very a godly person when she was in high school. And that's how people remembered her. So when she came back, they expected, you know, the old Susan, but she's no longer the old Susan. I gotcha. So some things, you know, define us, and you know, the things we learn from and grow from, but not everything defines us from our past. Okay. Good thoughts. Anybody else? Our personality. Okay. 
Like, what is a person? What do you mean by personality? Like, everybody acts different. Okay. And everybody, like, somebody will know you because this is how you are. Like, this is, this is how you react. This is okay. how you... Okay. Alright. I don't really how to explain it. It's okay. I think I think we know where you're kind of maybe headed towards. Like maybe like um, um, this person's self -tem or short tempered. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay. All right. Our choices define us. Look how happy she's maybe. about that. Did you see the look on her face? She's like, oh man, I think I got a good answer. Did I get a good answer? <laughs> I'm just kidding, Grace. I'm not making fun of you. Okay, choices. Anybody else? This may not be like so much as we define ourselves, but a lot of times people define us by like our family history okay. and stuff. <coughs> for instance? For instance, like say your dad was a drug addict. Mm, yes, yeah, that follows you around. Or was in jail or something. They're going to expect the same out of you a lot of times. Oh my gosh. I totally agree with that because I don't know how many times, well, I did used to get in trouble, but people would automatically assume, like, after I got saved and, and, and was around more churchy people, I was afraid to tell people my husband was in jail because they were judging me, you know, and people <laughs> expected me to, you know. Be the bad person. Yeah, they expected me to be a bad person. Or I would get the complete opposite when I would tell them my husband's in prison. You're married to somebody in prison? <laughs> I just would never think that. And I'm like, well, you didn't know me 10 years Did ago. Did you meet him to Kintel? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. No, I didn't. But, yeah, that, that's definitely a thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. That is hilarious. Okay, so here's just something for you guys to chew on. Can everybody read that, or do you want me to read it to you? Can everybody see that? Mm -hmm. So what do you guys think of that? So essentially our actions define us. Yes. You can say something, right. but the action has to follow. Yeah. Okay. What, do you, what are your thoughts on that? I think that's absolutely true. I can totally lie to somebody's face and say, oh, yeah, and then go behind their back and talk crap about them and treat them badly. Okay. Or if I'm going to tell that person I love you, I care about you, my actions need to prove that I need to show them with how I treat them, you know, how I how I talk about them when they're not around, mm -hmm. be okay. there for them. You know, if I love somebody and I care for somebody, I'm going to support them in the good and the bad, you know, um, obviously we cannot enable bad behavior, but we definitely have to let people know that we still love them, even if we don't agree with what they do. Right. Right. Hmm. Hmm. Anybody else have anything to add to that? Can I share something personal? You can. Yeah. So I've, I, I've had to deal with um, alcoholics most of my whole life. And, um, you know, Sam, he does drink, and I would always fight with him over it. And one day, you know, God kind of convicted me about it. You need to quit arguing with him and fighting with him because what good is this doing? It's not, it's not producing anything fruitful. And so I had to tell Sam, okay, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm not going to tell you to stop drinking. I'm not going to get upset and throw a fit every time you do this anymore. But just because I don't say anything, just because I'm quiet, doesn't mean I agree with what you, you're doing. And I and I had to just leave it there. I had to throw that out there. My silence does not mean I agree with what you're doing. You know I don't. But I love you, and I'm not going to fight with you every day. Mm. And then it was that was that. Mm. I was going to say... Uh... It's not coming. I didn't think it was going to be funny. I thought I was going to be the only person laughing. So I was like, that's good. 
Okay, so uh, what if, hypothetically speaking, there is someone who... Okay, here's an example. Have you ever done anything that you immediately felt bad for? And so you apologized, and then you did it again? Mm-hmm. Did you not really mean the apology? Or... I think sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Okay. Sometimes we say we're sorry to save face in the moment. Okay. Sometimes we truly are sorry, and we just mess up again. Mess up again. Okay. So maybe this with a little bit of a grain of salt, maybe? Maybe. Well, yeah, but I mean, still, we can still mess up, and we can still love people. I I'm just trying to get you to, we, to think. I'm not, not taking perfect. sides on this. We're not perfect. Our actions are not always going to betray. But I think for the most part... Okay, I see what you're saying. For the most part, if we're true, truly, you know, if that's who we are truly, then we we won't mess up too, too often. But, yeah, I mean, you have to give everybody grace because everybody's going to mess up and nobody's perfect. We're all going to fail each other at some point in time. What do you guys think of that? I think the statement's too black and white. Like, like Serena was saying, okay. for the most part, it's going to be This true. one here? Yeah. For the most part, it's true, but, you know, we mess up sometimes. Things happen where we can't. So show. maybe it lacks a little bit of empathy. Right. Or compassion. Yeah. Maybe compassion. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Grace. It lacks grace. Grace. Exactly. Okay. Anybody else has something? I do that. No? You're being awful quiet over there. You're good? <laughs> um, you know, it, it's bugging me, and it's going to bother me the whole th way through lesson if, the lesson if I don't say it. North Korea is right here. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. That. It was bothering me so bad. <laughs> well, okay, we're good, right? <laughs> we do that once more. <sighs> Man, I feel better. <laughs> okay, <laughs> moving on. So the things that, that, that defines us, there's the perceived things which are the popular things that everybody talks about. Okay, there's, there's things like what I've accomplished. But if you think about it, this isn't so much as what defines you as what you did. It's a reputation. Right. A reputation is not a definition. Those are two different things. See what I mean? That, does that kind of make sense? When I was a baby, I pooped myself. But, I mean, as far as I know, I don't want to myself anymore. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> Do you see what I mean? The, 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 a, his, a person's history can only define them so far. Right. It's more of just a reputation. Right. You know what I mean? And I think a lot of people with depression and anxiety and, and stuff like that, I think that they miss this point. That what we have done and where we have been is not where we are and what we are doing. You know what I mean? A reputation doesn't make a person. Saul is a perfect example of this. Or Paul, uh, kind of a kind of a douche, <laughs> killing people and being all rude and stuff, and then he gets saved. And I mean, he authored a lot of the New Testament. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of a kind of a big deal, you know. Um, so reputation that but that that's perceived though to still be what defines you though in our culture. So then, second to that is status. How much money you have, right? Oh, they're one of the rich kids. Mm -hmm. Oh, they've got money. They came from a... You know what I mean? You just kind of judge a book from its cover, don't you? Yeah. Or, oh, they're one of the poor people. Or, oh, his dad is an alcoholic. That's why he is dressed like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of immediately that status thing comes into play every single time you interact with someone. And whether you like, uh, 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 realize it or not, every encounter you have in your life it, it is going to reflect this, where, you're, where you instantly go to judge someone. And I think that's why we have a little bit of a hard time... Um, with our own self-image a lot of times is because we're secretly judging everyone around us and you can't possibly have that many thoughts go through your head and just expect to be okay with yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, I used to think a lot uh, till, till I saw myself later. I used to think a lot that like how your parents act, that's how you're going to be. Mm -hmm. Till me and my brother change. I mean, we made a choice for ourselves that we're not going to be like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now, I, like, I really changed my mind. Like, a lot of people say, oh, you're going to end up just like their parents. I'm like, 
not necessarily because yeah. everybody has a choice to do better or worse. Yeah. yeah. So, but I, I, that was my 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 mind back then. I'm like, it's gonna be just like them. Yeah. Till I change, I'm like, I'm not gonna be like that. Yeah. You have a choice. Yeah. You know, for better or for worse. Yeah. So. Yeah. It changed my mind completely. I was re- reading this funny thing that <laughs> I thought you would enjoy. Um, does everybody know who Deadpool is? And I already told you about this joke. Um, and everybody knows who, knows who Captain America is, right? It said um, the the uh, the two types of pastors' kids, and it showed Deadpool and it showed Captain America. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I, that just made me rem- made me think of it. But anyway, sorry. Um, so status uh, clothes also. I mean, it, there's a song about this that we were just just uh, doing at the party. The pumped up kicks, right? Mm-hmm. You know where where it's like there's this whole this whole thing that goes on with based on how you dress and you know what I mean and a lot of a lot of times we'll go in these in these pursuits of status our whole lives. Oh, did you hear what my kid did? Oh, did you hear about the promotion I got at work? Oh, did you hear about what my dad did? You know, oh, my dad could beat up your dad. This, our whole lives we carry on this thing about this status. You know what I mean? With especially you see people do this with their jobs, uh, with their clothes. You know, when, when you when you pay fifty dollars for a shirt, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, that I mean, you wear once and then it goes into the it goes like you just sell it. I, I actually knew somebody in California who did this. They would buy clothes, wear it one time, and they would never wash their clothes. They would just instantly go back, and the shirts cost like fifty dollars. It was a lot of money for them to do that, but you know, California, I guess, whatever. I just keep thinking like. Man, she must have had a really good job to be able to afford that. I couldn't afford Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, anyways, uh, but our whole lives we go up to the thing of status, don't we? Mm-hmm. So, um, and then the third thing there that I thought of, uh, my view of myself and others' view of me. But both of these things, if you think about it, are a little short-sighted, aren't they? For instance, you may think of yourself as the world's worst person. You know what I mean? You may be exceptionally hard on yourself, or you might be exceptionally prideful about yourself. You know, I'm I'm so smart. If all of you would just be as good with your finances as I am with mine, <laughs> right? If all of you see what I mean, that that whole thing about the judging again. But um, your view of yourself can be very distor- distorted, especially during moments of like panic attacks. Oh my gosh, you start believing all kinds of things that aren't true. See what I mean? And you, you actually believe them, but I mean it's still not true. Um, or uh, others' view of you. Sometimes people think of you like you're dirt, huh? Going back to that example of high school, were you ever put in a clique that you felt like you didn't belong in? Maybe. See what I mean? Uh, sometimes other people get a, get a view of you, and it's just not right. It's not true. That make sense? Also, though, sometimes we will portray ourselves the opposite of what we really feel about ourselves. Okay. Give an example, though. Well, like... I really may feel like total crap about myself all the time, but I walk around like super confident, like no, 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 yeah. because I want people to think better of me than I think. Aww, of myself. you're getting into psych- into psychology now. <laughs> just kidding. Go ahead. I'm just no, kidding. It's legit. That's true. Truly, you know, like people, some, you know, sometimes what people perceive is not always the way they feel about yeah. themselves. So you may think that person is real stuck up. Well, that may be because that person is really yeah. trying to hide how wretched of a person they really right. feel like inside. Right, yeah. So that it is very important to not judge people because they, they yeah. may really be struggling with some a lot of insecurity yes. and a lot of deep seated emotional issues that they're trying to cover up. And you know, on that note, good point. Um, you know what if that woman in California, going back to her as an example um, because she spent fifty dollars on the shirt. <laughs> that gets me every time. But just okay, going back to back to her as an example. Um, maybe she did it out of, out of compulsion because she felt like she was unwanted. Mm-hmm. See what I mean? Good point, sir. Good point. Now don't forget, a lot of times women they say they treat themselves. Oh, yeah. So you know, like. This is Dare like I ask? Shopping therapy, okay. You know, <laughs> we need to buy this this beautiful shirt. I don't understand, but, but they do it. say it's gonna make me beautiful. 
you know, well, I like, like I deserve it. I'm going to treat myself. Diana, eye contact. Do you do this? No, I don't. <laughs> no, and I'm totally against women that talk about it. And they actually ask me, like, when you go on a cruise, just, just do it. Because you're never going to be there. I'm like, no. Wait, what are we talking about? She's being so self-righteous about how she doesn't buy for her. No, I'm just kidding, oh, Dan. Okay. I'm kidding. I, I was like, She's oh not God, joking she about this at all. A lady asked, she said, you're going on a cruise, just buy yourself something nice. Don't don't worry how much it costs. I'm like, no, I don't do You're going to worry about it when you see your credit card statement. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Like, do I buy my kids new shoes or do I buy myself new shirts? <laughs> they don't need new shoes. Their kids, they'll grow out of them soon anyway. I, so, do that to my kids. I wouldn't buy my kids clothes until they're adults anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they'll just grow out of them in a couple months. Yeah, I love that. Uh, so then there's the actual what defines us, though. The actual reality. Private thought life. Who you are behind closed doors. What your heart is. See what I mean? Yeah. Has it ever occurred to you that the only person in the Bible, I believe, don't quote me on that, I, rewind. The main person in the Old <laughs> Testament that was that was said was said to have a, man, a, 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 a have a heart after God was someone who uh, had someone murdered so that he could commit adultery with his wife. Well, no, he already committed well, adultery. Well, yeah, but then he got married to her. Then he so. murdered her. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this was someone who uh, had to play like he was crazy. <laughs> Pretended to be crazy at the, at the gates of, what was it, Gaza or something? I don't know. Uh, I mean, just, you go through, uh, oh, here's a, here's one. Uh, disobeyed God in uh, accumulating wives and, and, and money. Um, well, uh, he did something that, that got uh, a famine, on not a, not a famine, a, uh, a disease on the land. Uh, what is it that he, oh yeah, he took an illegal census without offering the, the, um, the offering that was required of him. And so a bunch of Israelites died from that. Yeah. This is the man who had a heart who had a heart after God. Why? Because what defines us, what defines who we are, is is who we are behind closed doors. What's in our heart? Okay. What the real us, not the facade that we show to our others, not the facade that we see of ourselves. It's the person that is irrevocably there. The private life. Also, it's the current life choices and patterns. That's what defines you. It, it, t let's say today somebody somebody um, cuts you off on the highway. Are you going to be a person who forgives them, or are you going to be a person who chases them down, runs them off the road, and crashes open their glass? Is that what I mean? Are you laughing because this happened to you today? No, I was <laughs> laughing at Randy because he said that story one time in California. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Boy, road rage seriously does get get bad in those places, man. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Anyways, um, th those are the things that, that, that define you. Who you really are behind closed doors, and then who you are has a way of just coming out, doesn't it? Ever realize when you're when you're when you're thinking really bad thoughts about someone for a long period of time, it gets really difficult to not say it to someone else, and then accidentally maybe to them. Okay. Like, they'll be talking to you, and you'll be mad at them, and you'll just say, oh, I've practiced this conversation in my head so many times, I have the perfect zinger for this person. Mm -hmm. And don't look at me like you're more spiritual than I. Don't do it. Do you do that? <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, oh, I'm doing pray. it right now. We should pray for you. <laughs> um, so current life choices and patterns. What we do in the here and now. Today, who you choose to be. And then, and then lastly, um, our, our standing with God, where we are with him, this defines us. Uh, we're, we're doing a new song called Good, Good Father, and the chorus goes, um, the second part of the chorus goes, I am loved by you, it's who I am. See, what he's saying is that defines me. Mm -hmm. Okay, Our walk with God, and, and that's I believe that's exactly the same thing the Bible kind of you know talks about, not in those exact words, but I believe that that's kind of the essence of many scripture passages. Is, is the idea that God's, God gives us worth. God defines us. God changes us. He, he, we're, not, we're not just a person. We're a child of God. Does that make sense? 
He, he gives us something we didn't have before. And that standing with God, that proper standing with God, is something that that you know, can't be negated. Anyways, uh, why, why, not necessarily you personally, but why do people hate themselves? The choices they make. Okay, what? The choices they make. The choices they make, like... Um, like different things they do in life. The, um, say the cheerleader that um, makes fun of the nerds because that's what she's supposed to do. Okay. Yeah. I got you. What were you going to say? Um, like... The destructive patterns that we get, uh, addictions through that, that we okay. get, those can make us hate ourselves. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's very true. Yeah, Appearance. 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 Like is in our, our, our looks? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Past mistakes. Okay. Kind of going with what Chuck said, you know, um, maybe addiction. Okay. We, we, we've started down a road, a destructive path that we can't seem to get off, and it just turns into self-hatred and loathing, you know? Kind of like that Reliant K song, Who I Am Hates Who I've Been. Yeah. Mm. And, um, and I think also just, and, and I know because this is something I've dealt with a lot, and God spoke a word to me about it last week, of, you know, he told me my, my, my conviction leads to repentance, but the enemy leaves you feeling guilt and shame and everything. And Saint Corinthians seven ten. I'm not sure. I was just praying, and God just kind of spoke that to me and reminded me, you know, the enemy makes you feel guilty and ashamed and this and that. And um, and I think that's what makes us hate ourselves. Is that yeah, we we essentially we hate the person that we have allowed ourselves to become or hate the things we've allowed ourselves to do and we feel massive guilt and we can't forgive ourselves and yeah. overcome it. Uh, this passage here, For godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret, whereas worldly grief produces death. Exactly. Any, anybody else or anything else? What was that verse? Uh, 2 Corinthians 7.10 um, I think also that um, let's say we as a child, maybe we were abused okay. or something. We come out of that background, and we we hate ourselves. Okay. Yeah. yeah. In fact, some people in abusive situations wonder if it's something they did. Yeah. Like many times, it's what happens. And also wondering, like she said, if we're gonna be like that. Yeah. That's a fear. Yeah. yeah. It could also be by like how if we get diagnosed with something. Okay. And like, then we kind of let that define uh, define us. Oh, you you mean like uh, bipolar? Bipolar. Okay. Like you start letting that define you, and then you start looking down on yourself about it. Okay, and that's it actually just, a good point. And it kind of snowballs. Yeah. That's actually a very good point. What were you gonna say? Yeah, I was gonna add to his. Um. Um. <laughs> well, I'll say it. Um, like it happened when I was little. Like, like my dad used to say, because of you, we have these arguments. I always felt uh, yeah. like, like really guilty. Right. Like you don't. It's like you don't even want to live because yeah. they blame it on you. Everything what's happening. Yeah. So you start hating yourself. I'm like, yeah. what am I doing here? Yeah. You know. So I'm sure there's a lot of things going on in the house now with the kids, just like the same situation. So. Yeah, that's a good point. Are you going to say anything? Anything else? Okay. Um, so, once again, like I said, everything with this lesson is not exhaustive. You could literally teach for months on this thing. Okay, I'm just trying to give a nice little intro to it. <laughs> um, a secular worldview can sometimes do this. Um... You know, before we get saved, and even when we first get saved, we have that kind of time when we're still kind of getting used to our salvation, if you want to put it like that. You know, we're still kind of growing and whatnot. Um, or as we're, as even sometimes as we are saved, um, when we do worldly things, our, our, our mind just kind of goes to the worldly things, you know. Uh, and so we have a harder time understanding God's ways um, because we kind of just 
keep ourselves in spiritual maturity sometimes. Not all the times. I'm not trying to like condemn anybody. Okay, I'm just I'm just saying as an example. Ecclesiastes 2, 17 through 18 says, <clears throat> So I hated life. I hated life. Because what is done under the sun was grievous to me, for all is vanity and is a striving after wind. Everything seemed just pointless. I hated all my toil in which I toil under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to the man who will come after me. What good is it? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna die like everybody else dies, and it'll all been for nothing. And who? Um, and I'll actually I'll just stop there. Um, and so uh, that secular worldview. You see what I mean? At, at the end of Ecclesiastes. He figures it out finally. In the end, what really what it really comes down to is to serve the Lord. See what I mean, and what it really, what all this comes down to is, is that, and and that, that's that's exactly the point that Ecclesiastes is, is making there. That secular worldview, you're not going to arrive at the same conclusions as a a Christian worldview. You see what I mean? Um, uh, second here, self hate leads to repeated behavior, which causes self hate. Um, yeah. Addiction is another way of saying this. Um, past mistakes is another way of saying this. Uh, see what I mean? Like maybe we did something stupid. Uh, I don't know. We slap. I have a son, so I'll I'll give something that I'm afraid of doing someday. We slap our son, and we're so afraid of what we did that we try to cover it up with something else. Like uh, I don't know, drinking. I'm just trying to think of something off the top of my head here. And so we start doing a repeated behavior that, behavior that then causes us to hate ourselves more because we, we think we're turning into – see what I mean? So, oh, I, I'm becoming an alcoholic, right? See what I mean? Yeah. And you kind of just the, – the circle of, of things where maybe not – maybe the, the thing that initially caused it was something completely different, something completely like way over there. But still it causes this repeated a repeated pattern, and so then you start hating yourself for either that repeated pattern or what causes the repeated pattern. Uh, Proverbs 8 through, 8 through 6. Um, Proverbs really has a lot to do in principle with the things we're talking about. Uh, Proverbs 8, um, 36. But he who fails to find um, to find me injures himself. All who hate me love death. I'll read that again. But he who fails to find me injures himself. All who hate me love death. So it's kind of talking about that repeated pattern. And as Christians, sometimes we do this too, not just people in the world. You know, people in the world, um, they, they, they kind of hate themselves. They, they kind of either don't understand God or just hate God or whatever. And so they kind of have this thing. But even as Christians, we can get into the same kind of cycle. You know what I mean? Uh, of just kind of self-destruction from self-hatred and all these different things. Um, 2924. The partner of a thief hates his own life. He hears the curse but discloses nothing. So obviously um, the principle there is exactly what we were just talking about. So, um, Compare yourself to those more attractive or younger or more talented, etc., etc., etc. Somebody already said this. Uh, who was it? She said Diana? Yeah, yeah the appearance. Right, uh, right there. Uh, oh, they're more attractive than me. Especially, I I don't hear this one as often anymore because I think adults try to like mask that that's not really what they're thinking. Uh, I'm I'm not really thinking that, you know. But I think sometimes high schoolers are just more open with that. Um, so the more, last I heard it really um, more vocal was was um, around the high school age. And it seemed like um, everybody was having this issue. Even even the even the girls that were the pretty girls, you know what I mean? They were having the same issues. So it's like. Who are you looking at? If they're all judging themselves by you, who are you yeah. looking at? Like, are you the TV? They're I guess. At, like, yeah, the on TV. <laughs> um, Leviticus 19. What? He's gonna do something from Leviticus? Yes, okay. I am. <laughs> uh, verses 17 through 18. You shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Basically, what he's saying, the, saying here is you shall love your neighbor in the same way that you love yourself. Okay. So if this it, – it, they kind of build on each other. If this is how we're supposed to see our neighbor, then that's how we're supposed to see ourselves. And if we love ourselves, then that's how we're supposed to – see, I mean they kind of depend on each other, don't they? Mm-hmm. For the person who sees himself as lowly worm and for the person who sees himself as – Uber awesome. So, 
Uh, Matthew 7, 1 through 5. Judge not that you be not judged. Now, let me just stop right there. This is actually kind of a principle in Scripture. The way we judge others is how we're going to judge ourselves, first off. Second, <laughs> the way we judge open, other people openly is the way that other people are going – basically, if you don't show grace to other people, other people aren't going to show grace to you. See what I mean? Oh, well, aren't you the same person who was really douche to that other person? See what I mean? Yeah. But see, do you see the principle? Do you understand the principle there? Um, it kind of repeats itself. Okay, if I say, oh, Chuck is this, Chuck is this, and I'm looking down at Chuck, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look down at myself. And if I'm looking down at myself, I'm going to look down at Chuck. See what I mean? They go hand in hand. Yeah. That's, it, it's the idea of the passage, the principle of that passage. Um, I miss, I'm, I, I'm Mrs. Popular tonight. Uh, I keep getting texts over here. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And also, there's another thing in here that goes with and goes with some of the other parables there about how when we don't forgive others, God doesn't forgive us, and that kind of stuff. Obviously, um, with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And then he goes on through there, and you guys know the passage pretty well, though, and you can look it up if you are wanting the rest of it. Um, yeah. And uh, from these things come a lot of other things: jealousy, envy, anger. Oh well, I wish that I had what they had, or whatever. Um, and envy, you know. Uh, so you start, you know, responding from that, and because you're you're responding from that, you have a bigger problem with it. See what I mean? There'll be that initial temptation. Nicole's so much prettier than I am. See what I mean? And then um, I start feeling jealous. Why did you get all the good looks? And so then I start getting a, a worse attitude. See what I mean? Does that make sense? Well, we all start, I think, it, it becomes a competition, you know? Who looks better than who? Who has... Me. Who has a better house? Who has a better car? Who has more friends? Who has this... And then we kind of start getting in competition and, and wanting to show each other up when we're all supposed to be working together towards the same goal. Yeah. You know, when it's not about that. But we make it about that. Michael, what's this? But it, it, it becomes like that. It, it becomes a vicious I rat stole, race. I stole a pickle. That's why they call it a rat race, right? Is that why? Is that why? I don't know. <laughs> That's worth Googling. Google it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Good thoughts. Anybody else have anything to add? I don't Um... But uh, something else that I want to bring up, because we talked about it a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I'm just going to build on some things that were already said, though. Um, we were talking about the, about media, right? Um, music, TV shows, movies, media, the news. Um, and a couple weeks ago, we were talking about discerning that media. I think sometimes we're overly hard on ourselves because we don't discern that media. But let's say <clears throat> let's say we see a a hero on the on the screen and we kind of become envious that we aren't we lack that character. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Rick was able to forgive his wife for sleeping with what's what's his name? Uh, the sheriff that was killed in season two. Uh, Rick Grimes. Oh Shane. No, yeah Shane. So, I mean, oh, he was able to forgive his wife. I can't. I'm still mad at my mom for what she did to me. So, I mean, whatever it is, I don't know. You pick an example. And um, so we just kind of have that. And, and, and so we kind of get that bad self-image uh, because we're not discerning the media that we're watching. Or when we watch um, Victoria's Secret, Olay, uh, Avon, you know, all these different commercials where it shows, you know, the stereotypical, you know, beautiful woman that this is what you have to look like and, you know, whatever. Um, it kind of does the exact same thing where we aren't discerning, you know, okay, yes, but um, A, she probably barfs up half of her meals. Uh, B, there is also a good deal of tweaking they're doing on that screen. Um, you know, all these different things. C, there's more to life than being the prettiest girl in the room. So, I mean, there's so many different things that, that we don't discern while we're watching it. 
Mm -hmm. just kind of goes in and it's kind of like accepted reality you know what I mean kind of makes sense um anyways um like how many people think that there's so many errors in the errors in the bible because they watched family guy and that's what they said oh well okay so I mean they just kind of accepted this fact oh well Richard Dawkins thinks yeah but what do you think where's this passage that you're having such a hard time with I can explain it to you if you want see what I mean where people just accept things because that's just the way it is um but I want you guys to write this down why if you ever go through times of, of, of hating yourself okay ask yourself this question why do you hate yourself right now why do you hate yourself right now because sometimes if we actually stop and think about it why why do I hate me why am I so depressed it'll be something like either ridiculous or it won't make sense if you actually just stop and think about it or um, it'll be something that's ma manageable when you, if you don't stop and clearly address the question to yourself why do I hate myself you won't be able to fix the problem that's causing you to hate yourself see what I mean mm -hmm. but if you take the time just stop and just ask yourself why do I hate myself what is my problem with me oh well they they say that I'm well it, it, it it, let me clarify this. Okay, first off, it doesn't matter what, what what people think about you, but it does as much as it depends on God's kingdom, but it doesn't as much as it depends on your self-image. That makes sense, mm -hmm. kind of. It's kind of hard to say that without saying, you know, oh, you just need to believe in yourself. You know, sure. I'm not saying that. But it's hard to articulate your words, I guess. Um, and then ask yourself this, do you re really believe that thing that's causing you to hate yourself? Because sometimes it'll be so what somebody else put in your head. Yeah. See what I mean? So stop. Do just stop for a second and ask yourself that. Why do I hate myself? And then, do I really believe that? Yeah. I can trace all of my self-esteem issues in high school back to this and say, um, do, do I know why? Yeah, I, I did know. And do I really believe that? No, I didn't believe any of those things. See what I mean? But yet, for whatever reason, I was allowing myself to believe it and allowing my self-image to be harmed because of what other people were saying or because of what s some other reality was based off a movie or TV show. See what I mean? So, um, so there's obviously two extremes on this, and you don't have to write this down. This is just as an example. Um, there's the, the first is the inflated self-value. Um, and, and this is where somebody's going through hard times and you strengthen them in the flesh. You know what I mean? Like, um, oh, you just need to rise above. Oh, he just doesn't deserve you, girl. You know, all these different things that are just all about you. Oh, yeah, sure. So you can talk. Uh, well, I have to look at my notes on oh. the next one. Um, but this one says uh, you have to have you have to value yourself and know that you're worthy of someone as loving and caring as you are. You see how self-centered that post is. Yeah. Now I'm not saying you should get with someone abusive. I'm not saying that kind of nonsense at all. But what I'm saying is you don't correct stupid with stupid. And this post is just straight up stupid. You have to value yourself. Okay, yes, that you do have to value yourself to an extreme. Don't see yourself as the most important person in the world, but. Have a view of yourself. I mean, goodness sakes. Um, to know that you're worthy of someone is loving. When you start feeling like you're worthy or you deserve something is right about the time when you don't deserve it anymore. Right. Just let me establish that. Um, I usually give people more chances than they deserve. But once I'm done, I'm done. Do you have the, just the bitterness off of that? I, I think Jesus said 70 times 7, right? Didn't he say something like that? Basically, the idea here is this It sounds really good, but when you put it into real life practice, it means I think I'm a pretty good person, but I draw the line somewhere. Well, or you do what Jesus said and you forgive those who persecute you and pray for them, right? Yeah. Right? Um, so th these are things that build you up in the flesh. The power is all about you. It's all from the power within. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not anything that actually has substance. And the thing about strengthening yourself in, in, cra in crap like this is you'll always need to be re-strengthened. Well, that's what I was going to say. People who follow this advice usually get back into the same destructive yeah. relationships. Like, for instance, a great example. For instance, oh, I'm not going to listen to my parents on not marrying this person. 
So then you marry them, and then you get a divorce. Oh, well, that was different. He was just a jerk. I'm going to marry this guy now. Uh, how long since you got a divorce? Oh, like three years ago. Maybe you should wait, just hold on, or ask somebody else's opinion, or date him for longer than two weeks. I mean, let's calm down here with this and, and, and you know, mellow out here. You don't have to go so fast with this. Young people especially, which we are all young people, feel like they have to do their thing like yesterday. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Your, your life isn't that short. <laughs> you can you can stand to hold off a few weeks. <laughs> um I, I've actually tragic. There was uh, somebody who, well, I thought we were really good friends, and 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 you know, a, a relationship comes by, and they're just so hungry for a relationship that they abandon everything that they knew, you know, and, and can't make other people's choices for them, I guess. Uh, so then there's uh, the other extreme, the non-existent self-value, and this is based in large part off of. Ugh, hearing very terrible things. So let me start with the, the post there. I just want to feel loved by someone. I want to feel important to someone. I want to feel wanted by someone. No. Don't care who they are. No self-value whatsoever. <laughs> you see that? Like, And that's a bad place to be in. As parents, we need to be very careful about this. When we have kids, if we have kids... <laughs> Not you, you. If you have kids, you know you you need to be careful about this because kids need constant validation, constantly. They're worse than me, and uh, but but then for those of you who aren't going to have kids, you know, you'll never believe that just the things that you say in passing that kids latch onto. I uh, some things that I said that I like. Oh, that's not even important. It was just like a little pat on the back. But then like years later, they bring it back up, and I was like, oh, okay. Well, if you felt that encouraged by that, I hate to think of what you thought about what I was saying over here. <laughs> that, how much counseling did you have to take? <laughs> I was telling you guys on Saturday how I, I yelled at, at well, Sam and Eli before I left for worship practice. And what oh. was the what was the last thing Eli says to me when yeah. I walked out the door? I love you, Mommy. Yeah. But in a very insecure way, like, you still love me, Mommy, right? Right? Because I just... Yeah, you know, that, that search for that search yeah. for validity. And I'm like, of course I still love you. Just because I yelled at you doesn't mean I don't love you. But kids don't realize that, yeah. you know? Yeah. So. I was going through Walmart the other day, and this woman and her two kids walked past me, and one of them goes, I'm sorry. And she's like, it's not your fault. I'm like, in the middle of Walmart? Why? I, I don't understand. What was, what was going on? Apparently, she was talking about something that had happened a couple of days earlier. Uh huh. And her daughter was apologizing for it, even though she had nothing to do with it. Oh, I see. Oh, wow. And, yeah. <laughs> and she was like six years old. So, like, it, it can show. I'm going to say she's going to grow to be a gossip. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Um, um, so then you also hear a lot of pastors kind of condoning this. They think for whatever reason, if you're comfortable with yourself, you are unaware of sin in your life. And it doesn't have to be to those extremes. You know what I mean? You can you can not hate yourself and still realize that you need Jesus. Yeah. That can be a thing. But, but for whatever reason, it's oftentimes just overlooked. So here are some, some quotes. People are so sinful that God just can't stand them. God is waiting to destroy them. You, you need to repent because God is just waiting to destroy you. The, 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 the thing that happened with the flooding in, in Louisiana, that's because God was so upset with their sinfulness, he just decided to write them off the face of the earth. Uh, that, that tsunami that happened a couple years ago, that was because God hated them so much for their evilness. That he is white. It's like, whoa, calm the jets. Calm the jets. Yes, some historical facts do happen from God's wrath. However, it's not because he got tired of the people, he got tired of the sin, and he set examples with those things to teach other people. He always used it for a greater good. He doesn't just go around causing mass devastation and chaos for the point of, for, I mean, for the sole purpose of, 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 well, for the purpose at all, of, because he hates people. That's just not something that enters into God's head. That's something that enters into our head. See what I mean? Or like when our kids do something that irritates us. It doesn't have to be your kids. I know some of you guys don't have kids. Um, when kids do something that irritates us, you know how we get that, that oh, the wrath of Khan. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know you know what I mean. Like, even you kids, people who don't have kids know what I mean. Um, God is waiting for the day to destroy those sinners. You know, almost like, almost like we're so much better just because, you see what I mean? We're, you're still a person. You've just been washed by the blood. That's the only thing that separates you. You're still a person. You know what I mean? Um, so these overly condemnation uh, things that have no real basis, 
Um, you aren't worthy to worship God. And before you say, oh, nobody would really say that. Isn't that what some people say in churches when they say, oh, you can't come to our church because you're fill in the blank. You're not dressed right. You have to come in with a suit or, or, or with a dress on or whatever. Or yeah. you, what? You you, yeah, you can't have a hat on. You can't cut your hair. You can't dye your hair. You can't have tattoos. You can't smoke. You can't drink. You can't, see, I mean, all these things, basically what they're saying, just in case you missed it, you're not worthy to worship God here. Mm-hmm. But we are, and we set the standard, and you're not worthy of it. That's, in essence, what they're saying. So before you say, oh, nobody would really say that, people say that all the time. Mm-hmm. I've actually faced that with one of the Baptist churches in yeah. the I was always getting a toll because I wouldn't stand up to sing. It was constant. You sinner! <laughs> I actually got dragged out one Sunday. Yeah? Last time I went to that church. Yeah, that's a little extreme. Okay. Well, I have a similar story of being forced into something. Um, I grew up in, in Pentecostal churches, and there's always that one woman in, in at least one church who stands up and has you do the Jericho march. <laughs> and I didn't want to go to that, buddy, and they forced me into it. They used to carry me. <laughs> Chuck got thrown out of his wheelchair twice. <laughs> Anyways, um, so you don't belong here. Just that idea of you know superiority. Um, I'm, ne- I'm never going to get past this. Doesn't matter what I do, I'm never gonna get past this. If I messed up the past 50 times, I'm. What? Why would I think that I'm gonna get past it now? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just. I'm just messed up too. I've just messed up too many times, too much. Um, I'm not worth it. I'm just not worth it. God, you went. You made a mistake when you saved me because I'm just not worth it. And for those of you who've been there, you know what. You know the things that I'm that I'm saying are actually things that people think. So I mean, don't. Uh, anyways. Um, I need a relationship to feel good about myself. If if they're single, it's like the end of the world. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because if, I guess they're not comfortable with themselves, or maybe they think that life purpose is only found. Like some people who have kids just to validate their existence, they don't actually want kids. They like the idea of a kid, but they don't actually want to have a kid. And then when they say when they have a kid, they're impatient with the kid. They're they're just rude to the kid. They're they're kind of douchey. They don't make time to spend with the kid because they didn't want a kid. They wanted something. They thought they want. They wanted the idea of a kid. It's like people who want a puppy and then whine and complain because they had to pick up the poop from it. Well, you wanted a dog. That's a package deal. That's how it works. Kids are the same way. You know what I mean? And a lot of people do this with relationships. If I, I'd be so happy if I was with him slash her, whatever, um, whoever, you know. Uh, I, they would just they would they would complete me, and then you get with them and it's not as you planned out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Everyone's all everyone's had their first crush, their first love, and then it, though for those who have actually been unfortunate enough to get with that first love, terrible things happen, right? <laughs> terrible things. Yeah. There's two people who aren't happy with their first love: those who actually ended up with them and those who didn't end up with them. <laughs> like it's just something that's gonna happen. You're gonna have that emotional insecurity, and you're gonna probably carry it around for the rest of your life. However, you move past it. You know what I mean? Like it, it's whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, it's kind of it's the same thing here, where you need that. You feel like you need that relationship to validate yourself. The people you see going from uh, sleeping with person after after person. Why? Because they they want something to connect to. Yeah. Um, or pornography sex makes me feel better. And those of you who have dealt with people in sexual addictions know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, they'll do it and they'll feel bad for doing it, but after, but but they'll and they'll be this like there'll be this time either before or after, depending on the person, and it'll be a short cool off period, but it'll be there where I just wanted to feel better about myself, or I wanted to I wanted to just relax. I just wanted to get get away from it all. I didn't want to face reality anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, especially nowadays, things are turning so digital and so um, not real. It's very easy to slip into this. Uh, texting, we text everybody with our with our phones rather than real life conversations. We watch movies, and that's our interaction with the world. We go on places like Facebook rather than going out with friends like people used to. Um, we we're we're always looking for something fake, something better than the real, which is what pornography is based on. I mean. Don't think that just because you get married uh, and a sexual addiction will go away. It won't. So, I mean, because you're not going to find what you thought you were looking for in the relationship itself. You're not going to find it. And it's the same thing for whether it's a sexual uh, relationship or whether it's a non-sexual relationship. You can't find things in the wrong place. Let's say, for instance, my keys are right there. I can look in that ottoman. All I want for the keys, they're still not going to be there. I can keep looking for it the next day. They're still not going to be there. 
So, I mean, they're right there. It's the exact same thing with relationships. We keep looking for this thing to... to you need to be comfortable with being single before you can be married. And then you'll really understand marriage when you're really comfortable with it, being single. Does that make sense? Yeah. Otherwise, you keep looking for things. Um, and then the honeymoon period goes away, and it always does. You know what I mean? Oh, I hate you. I hate you, Obi-Wan. I hate you. And then, I, you know. I right? Time. What was I thinking? <laughs> um, so uh, we're not going to be able to finish this, I think. Um so I'm gonna try to just take it. As, I'll just go into next week. I haven't I haven't set next week's schedule. We're just whatever we don't finish next today, today we'll go into next week. Um, how are you supposed to see yourself, biblically speaking? How are you supposed to see yourself? Complete. Sorry. Complete. Can you You're elaborate? supposed to. If God made you who, are, who you are, then you're supposed to be satisfied with what mm. God gave you. Oh, you know, I think those are two, some are cheese sticks maybe, right? Yeah. Like pizza bites. Okay. Anybody else? Don't mind me. <laughs> She's so distracted right now. I'm sorry. Do you want me to go sit back on? Yes, yes. Go. Go. <laughs> I'm sorry. I need, I need some cheese sticks. That looks like one. Maybe. Oh, no. I'll be fine. Those are the cheese sticks. Right here? Yeah. Ha ha. That's a cheese stick? Yeah. It doesn't look like a stick. It looks like, it looks like, like a square. Yeah, yeah, one, right? <laughs> okay. So how are you supposed to see yourself? Okay. <laughs> Are you guys thinking need more time or do you want me to move ahead? I'm kinda of still thinking. Okay. That's okay. I can wait. Well I don't want everybody to have to wait on me. Everybody's dead, Trina. No, I'm saying I'm done. <laughs> Special Edie. You know, uh, God uh, was talking to the, uh, I think the prophet said that, you know, I, I knew you before you were born, and you get together in your mother's room. I, I know the plans I have for you. Anybody else? Anything else? Okay. Um, we should not, never see ourselves as worthless. Our value is found in God. Matthew 10, 29 to 31. And think about this. And this is elsewhere, too, in the, in the lesson. God could have made you in any way that he wanted, and he made you just the way you are. And then, knowing what you would do with your life, he still sent Jesus just to save you. Think about that. See, I mean, there's just certain, a certain piece that comes with that. God knows who you are. The pro I believe it's the prophet who says, you formed my innermost being, you, you, you know me. You know what I mean? Oh no, it's David in the Psalms. Uh, you, you you formed me in the deep. You 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 were the one who was knitting me together in my mother's womb. See what I mean? You 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 know me inside out. You knew who I would become. Matthew ten, twenty nine to thirty one. Are not two sparrows sold for a single penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even but even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, for you are more of more value than many sparrows. He didn't say if you are saved. Yeah. People are of value to God.
Now, we should realize that we that we will still sin. That's going to be a fact of life. Until the day that you are given the resurrected body, you will sin. Okay. But you are redeemed, which means you are no longer a sinner. Does that make sense? You are someone who sins on occasion, right? But you're no longer a sinner. That's no longer what defines you. You hear what I said? That's no longer what defines you. Before we're saved, what, def what before God's eyes, what we're judged by is by that wrath that God is storing up against us because of our sinfulness and our re refusal to repent. But after we're saved, see what I mean? Sin causes God's wrath. God hates sin. Does that make sense? So what happens, is what Paul says, is that we build up an account, a wrath account. And it's an, what did Pastor say, an IRA wrath? Oh, an IRA wrath. Pastor's the one who said it. I didn't come up with it. He's so um, and, uh, and the only way for that to be demolished is by accepting Jesus Christ. That's it. That's all we have to do. Um, so, but God doesn't hate people. He sees them as absolutely valuable, but he does hate sin. See, there, there is a, there is a big dif difference there. Um, Romans seven fifteen, and that kind of defines who we are. When you mess up, oh, I mess up again. What is it that that Mercy Me song says? Um, 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 no matter the scars, no matter the bruises. No matter the bumps, no matter the bruises. Yes. No matter the scars. Still yes. The truth is, the cross has made you fall. There. Yes. Oh, that song. God, the fall. The cross has made you fall. See, what, do you understand what he's singing in that song? The, the, we find that identity in Christ, in Christ. So the next time you mess up with that thing that you've been you've been messing up on for years, it's okay. Just keep seeking after the Lord, ask Him for forgiveness, and move on. Learn from it, but don't hold it and don't let it destroy you. See what I mean? Because God's wiped that clean. Does that make sense? Y you are not saved by your your ability to continue in perfection. You are saved because Christ, who was perfect, a big fancy word, word imputed. Basically, He gave you His righteousness. Does that make sense? Think of it like a blanket. You can't get in this door without a certain blanket. You have that blanket to get through the door. Does that make sense? Um, so Romans 7, 15 through... I'm at Romans 15. Romans 7, 15 uh, through 24. For I do not under understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right. Just who is saying, yes, the the fleshly man is sinful. However, we're going to get, there's a difference between salvation-wise and worldly-wise. Okay. Um, for instance, Hitler was a very wicked person. Let's say Chuck isn't saved. Chuck isn't a very wicked person. He's sinful. That makes, does that make sense? Yeah. So there's that worldly con contrast, but then there's a spiritual contrast between saved and not saved. Does that make sense? There, it, it kind of? Okay. Um, but not the ability... I'm sorry. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now, if I do what, it, what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So, before salvation, everyone is sinful, yes. But then there's some people who are wicked and some people who are less wicked. Mm. But, without faith, it is impossible to please God anyways. So nothing that they're going to be able to do is going to be able to earn them salvation. However, they will be judged harsher or less harsh depending on how wicked they were. That makes sense? Kind of? For instance, Hitler, who was responsible for killing a bunch of people, Probably not as wicked as the uh, 
person, you know, across the street who just is an atheist and, and never really believed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of, a, kind of a contrast there. However, as far as salvation is concerned, the only way you're getting to heaven is Jesus. Yeah. So yeah. There, th th what he's talking about here is that is that pull from the from the old self and the new self, kind of that that caught in between your salvation and who you, who you are and who you used to be, basically. Um, so I find it, it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. I'll stop there. Um, Matthew twenty six forty one. Excuse me. Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of just a principle that, that that goes to lots of other things. Have you ever done something really stupid and you're like, I'll never do that again, I'll never do it again. And you really genuinely want to not do that again. But then, you do it again, don't you? Yes. Mm -hmm. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is very weak. <laughs> Philippians, which is why I encourage people in sexual sins specifically, if you know your weakness, just don't subject yourself to it. Like, oh, I have such a crush on this girl, and, and so don't be alone with her. Like, don't tell her that you have a crush on her, whatever the heck you do, and don't be alone with her. Don't tempt yourself in a bad situation. See what I mean? Uh, anyways, Philippians. One verse six. And I am sure of this that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. See, God is, is forming us, yes. But the finished product will be like he's talking about here at the resurrection. So and we'll probably stop on the side. What time is it? Yeah. It's time. So we'll stop on the side. Um we should never see ourselves in a prideful way. We should never see ourselves in such a way that um, we think that we got here by ourselves. That, um, you know, we can just, we're just the cat's meow, we can just rise above. Mm, pizza. Philippians 2, I thought that said 28. 2, two through 8. Um... Complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. He's talking about the prideful attitude. He's not talking about looking at yourself like you're just the, you're just the lowest of worms. Like some people go to God in prayer, and this is their prayer. Oh, God, I, oh, I'm so wicked. I'm so sinful. I'm so, and that's their whole prayer. Like they don't actually petition God for anything. Which prayer, by definition, is petitioning of God to do something. But they're not actually petitioning anything. They're just telling him how wicked they are. Well, here's a little, here's another newsflash. If you are saved, stop telling people how wicked you are. Because what what you're doing is you're saying that Christ's sacrifice wasn't enough. So when those moments of doubt come in, where you start Judging yourself really harshly. Oh, I'm such a, I'm such a, no, you're saved. You're covered by the blood of the Lamb, and move on. See what I mean? When you start sitting there and, and with those self-destructive thoughts, no good comes from it, and it's unbiblical, and you're mocking Christ. See what I mean? Get out of those, those just self-pity parties, those, those loathing, uh, self-loathing, uh, uh, those hatred par pity parties. Just get out of them. They're destructive. They'll cause you to have more destructive behavior in the future and more destructive thoughts in the future. Nothing good comes from it. So, I mean, only death is what, the only thing that's going to come from that. Anyways, so, but just to kind of summate what I said here, Christ makes us what we are. We are worthy because of Christ, which means that when we start getting prideful and thinking that it's all ourselves and that we don't need Christ, we're no longer worthy, are we? Because Christ makes us worthy. So what we have to do is we have to keep depending on Christ, don't we? We have to keep trusting in Christ. <laughs> See what I mean? Um, in ourselves, we are helpless for salvation. Just because there are some people more wicked than other people doesn't mean that anybody can get to God by some other means. Um, um, so we are loved by God, we are made by God, and we are each a unique person. That tells you something of your worth to God.
You are a unique person. God didn't God didn't make a clone when he made you. He made a specific person, a special person, and he sees you with great worth. He sees you of value. He died for you, for goodness sakes. Um, so he loves you. He, he made you. You're a unique person. I mean, th that that is a that is a value statement in and of itself. So next week we'll pick this back up with what are some common self criticisms. So, um, we almost made it through this lesson, um, but not quite. Uh, any questions? Any comments? I'm gonna stop the recording. I'm going to do it. I'll push.